lives from just off Orwell Lane, baseball is woven into the fabric of America like no other sport. And tonight's episode adds a new patch to that quilt with the shadow joining the tapestry. Buy your peanuts and Cracker Jack and get an extra helping of murder. Three pitchers have all been felled during games after the entire stadium lighting goes dark, and it is up to Lamont in the form of the shadow to close out the mystery and save further lives. Can the signs be read in time to save the next life, or will the shadow strike out swinging? As the puns continue, this episode appears somewhat out of left field for scriptwriter Jerry Devine, and while not the strongest, shows that despite some of the criticism often directed to his scripts as formulaic, he was certainly capable of turning in an excellent mystery worthy of our titular hero. Originally entitled Murder at the Ballpark, the title was changed just before airtime, but no one altered the narrator's script, leaving both the final presentation as well as the programming releases referencing the original title. Starring Bill Johnstone and Marjorie Anderson, and featuring the third canonical appearance of Officer Murphy from October 8th, 1939, The Diamond Murders. <laughs> <laughs> the Shadow, mysterious character who furthers the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The Shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the shadow belongs. Today's story, Murder in the Ballpark. Well, sport fans, here we are back at Eagle Field. There's been no score in this game so far, you know. Whitey Brooks, the pitcher, is at that right-hand batter. Now this two and two on Whitey. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch, and Whitey hits one out into right field. It's a base hit. He's on his way now, and... Wait. Wait. Brooks is staggering on the baseline. Blood is running down his cheek. He's fallen. Extra, extra, Whitey Brooks, Ace Hurler, murdered in ballpark. Extra, extra, Brooks, murdered in ballpark. Extra. Hey, Andy, what are you doing here in that clubhouse? You're supposed to be out warming up. You pitched today. Look at him. He falls asleep ten minutes before the game time. Come on, wake up, Andy. 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 Here, come here, somebody, quick. Andy. Andy's dead. Second murder at Eagles Field. Crossman found murdered in clubhouse. Extra read all about it. Yeah. Our seat's at the foot of this aisle, Margot. Right on the third baseline. Okay. Oh, do you mind if we stand here a second, Lamont? I've never seen anything like this. A night nice baseball game. Why, those big arc lights make the field as bright as day. That's right, Mongo. It's very impressive. Keep moving, will you, lady? You're blocking the view. Oh, sorry. Lead on, Lamont. All right. Say, you know, I'm very curious to know why we've come to this game tonight. You promised you'd tell me when we got here. Well, Mongo, my interest happens to be professional. Oh. You know that two killings have taken place at this ballpark within the last two weeks? Yes, I remember reading that two noted pitchers were mysteriously slain. And it happened in this very stadium. One was an ace hurler named Brooks. The other was a great pitcher by the name of Crossman. Oh, it's unbelievable. Why? Well, somehow you never associate murder with baseball. Nevertheless, it has happened. And that's why we're here tonight. I see. Say, Lamont, that hunchback certainly can play baseball. What? Well, there's one out there on the field. Oh, yes. 
That's Bogo, the mascot. He's been with the team for years. Good little ball player, too. He always clowns for the customers during practice. Lamont, it says here in the program that Joe Roberts caught more flies than any other shortstop. What's a shortstop, and what's he want to catch flies for? Well, Margo, a shortstop's one of the players, and uh, a fly is... Oh, I know what a little fly is, silly, but why do they call him a shortstop? Well, because it... I'll tell you later, Margo, the game started. Who are the players in blue? Those are the umpires, darling. Oh, I won't say another word. Batteries for tonight's game. For the Eagles, Scraggy pitching, and Clovis catching. Who did he say? I don't know, Margo. That's, uh, that's part of the game. You're never supposed to understand the announcer. For the Terriers, Barson pitching and Foythbun catching. Label. Woo! I guess it's the thing to do. <laughs> Lamar, are you sure they can see to play under these lights? Well, they have all season. Now, uh, what do you say, Margo? Let's watch the ball game, shall we, huh? Who's the man in the center position? My darling, he's affectionately known as the pitcher. And one of the best pitchers in the baseball game, I might add, Ed Marson. What's he twisting all around for? He's winding up for the first pitch. And here it comes. Well, the lights have gone out. Come on, what's wrong? I don't know, but I don't like it. Sit tight, Muggle. It's so dark. I don't understand it. Oh, there the light's back on again. I wonder what... Margo, look. Out in the center of the diamond. Marson, the pitcher. He's stretched out on the ground. Where are you going, Lamont? Out on the field to see what's happened to Marson. You wait there. Ed, I couldn't see nothing. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? What? Don't move him until we find out what's happened. Ed, Ed, you all right? He's out cold. What? Huh? He's more than out cold, gentlemen. He's dead. Well, coroner, what's your verdict? Commissioner Weston, this man was electrocuted. Murphy, we'll start looking around out here in the infield. Uh, can I be of any help, Commissioner Weston? Huh? Oh, it's you, Cranston. I thought I ordered this park empty. Well, we knew that rule didn't apply to us, Mr. Weston. Hmm. Good evening, Miss Lane. Did the coroner reach any verdict? Yes, yes. Well, may I ask what it was? The department is not at liberty to divulge that information at present, Mr. Cranston. Oh, I see. It uh, wouldn't have been electrocution, huh? would it? Well, what makes you think that? This little steel plate here beside the pitcher's rubber. Uh, where? Right here. Uh, oh, so that's... Uh, wait, the... Commissioner. I wouldn't touch it if I were you until the wire is traced to its source. Well, that's how it was done. His steel plates on his spike shoes made the contact necessary for the shock. Wasn't that clever of Lamont to find it, Commissioner? Yes, yes. Who do you suppose did it? Well, the department is... Not at liberty to divulge that information at present. In other words, you don't know, isn't that it? Uh, not at all. I'd like to point out a few things to you, Weston. What's that? Have you noticed that all the deaths have occurred on the teams that are playing the Eagles? Yes. And all the victims were pitchers? Very excellent pitchers, I might add. Yes, but what does that prove? Nothing conclusive. Just a lead, that's all. Oh. I have a favor to ask of you people, Cranston. And what's that? I don't want anyone to know that we were aware of how the victim died, so please keep it quiet, will you? Certainly. And now, I have a favor to ask you. Well? I'd like to be present at headquarters tomorrow when you conduct your investigation. It's a deal. Oh, yes. Come in, Margot. The commissioner will be delighted to have you here. Right, Commissioner Weston? Uh, by all means, come in, Miss Lane. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, have you found out anything? No, I'm afraid not. Any more of them out there, Murphy? Uh, just two. Pixie Parker, the pitcher, and old Hilton, the groundkeeper. Uh, send Parker in. Yes, sir. Well, this will be very educational, Margot. Mr. Pixie Parker is uh, the original Daffiness boy. <laughs> sort of a fugitive from one of those stories Ring Lardner used to write. Oh, wonderful, Lamont. How do you do? Come right in, Parker. This is Miss Lane and Mr. Cranston. Oh, I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. Thanks, Pard. Same here. Margot. Can you shed any light on our mystery, Pixie? Well, Commissioner, I am thinking while I am waiting outside that what happens last night is very much the same as happened to me when I'm having a 20-game win streak in Jersey City. Well, how's that? Well, as I am the sensation of the league, they are saving me for pitch and night games exclusive. On account of I am such a gate attraction. Yes, but what's that to do with Marson's death? Well, I am reaching that point. Now, go on. One night I am pitching for Jersey City, steaming them in in my usual baffled style, when all of a sudden, the lights is out. Yes, yes, go ahead. There is much nervousness and confusion. All right, all right. Let's... And then all of a sudden, the lights is on again. Yes, and what then? 
We went on with the game, that's all. <laughs> I see. Thank you, Pixie. You've been a big help. Oh, that's okay. Uh, send Pop Hilton in, will you, Pixie? Sure, sure. I, uh, I am very happy to have made both your acquaintances. Likewise. Well, that was very informative, and this old Hilton guy would be worse. Well, who is he, Commissioner? The groundkeeper. Used to be a great pitcher years ago till he stopped a baseball at the top of his head. Oh. Been a little balmy ever since. I see. Come in. Uh, you sent for me. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is Miss Lane and Mr. Cranston. How do you do? Oh, yeah. How do you do? Uh, you probably like me to tell you about the murders, wouldn't you? Can you shed any light on them? Light? Light? In darkness, there is light. And in light... Darkness. Hmm, Gertrude Stein. Come on, Pop. Stop talking riddles. Do you or don't you know anything? Have you ever uh, read uh, uh, Shelley, Commissioner Weston? I don't read the sport pages. Uh, Shelley was a poet, Commissioner. Oh, a very fine poet. Shelley once wrote, The uh, awful shadow of some unseen power floats, though uh, unseen amongst us. Now, that's what you're dealing with, Commissioner. I'm dealing with a murder case, and I've wasted enough time on you. That'll be all, Pop. Oh, well, as you wish, Commissioner. Good day. Well, an afternoon wasted. Not entirely. Oh, what do you mean, Cranston? Nothing. We'll be running along, too. Come on, Margo. Right. Goodbye, Commissioner. I'll send you over a copy of Shelley, if you like. I mean the poet, not the sports writer. Oh, that's mighty nice. Thanks. Goodbye. What do you mean, Lamont, that the afternoon was not entirely wasted? That old man, Pop Hilton, he knows something. Do you think so? I'm sure of it. And the shadow will pay a call on the old boy at the baseball park tonight. Lamont, I can't believe that this ballpark is the same place that was... Full of cheering spectators last night. Yes. It is rather eerie, isn't it, Margot? Those rows and rows of empty seats. Deserted. Completely empty. Oh, it gives me the creeps. It seems almost haunted. Maybe it is haunted, Margot. Haunted by the ghosts of great players. And the games they've played. Lamont, look. Out there on the playing field. Where? You can see it in the moonlight. Oh, what is it? I, I don't know. Why, It's moving. It's a man. It wouldn't be one of your ghosts. No. It's old man Hilton, the groundkeeper. He seems to be very interested in something on the ground by the pitcher's mound. The steel plate that killed Marson. Yes. You wait here, Margot. I think the shadow should know what Hilton's up to. You won't be frightened here alone, will you? No. No, go ahead, Lamont. I'll just sit down in one of these empty seats. Clever. Fiendishly clever. <laughs> I quite agree with you, Mr. Hilton. Hey, Did I hear someone speak? I spoke. Well, who are you? I am known as the Shadow. Shadow? Shadow? Well, well, come out where I can see you. I'm standing right beside you, Hilton. Beside me? Oh, oh no, there, there, there's no one beside me. <laughs> Oh, it's my mind playing tricks on me again. Your mind is not deceiving you, Hilton. I have merely clouded it so that you cannot see me. What do you want? I was interested in your examination of that steel plate. Oh. Rather ingenious killing device, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, yes. Do you know anything about these deaths, Hilton? Of course. We all must know something about death. Death has a thousand doors from life. Yes, of course. And you know through which door Marson traveled, don't you? Yes, that's right. I do. Can you tell me who opened that door for him? Well, I think I could. I think I could. Come now, Mr. Hilton. I think it was... Uh, uh, uh. You'll never find out now, Mr. Shadow. Come back. Come back. Lamont. Lamont, are you all right? Yes, Margot. But the old man, Hilton, is he? Oh, my Lord. He's dead. The bullet pierced his head before he could reveal what he knew. Then you didn't learn anything. Oh, yes, I did, Margot. And our murderer will learn something, too. What do you mean? The killer, Margot, heard my shadow. 
but I saw his. Lamont! Lamont! Margo, what are you doing here? Oh, you think I'd have missed this, Lamont? Say, isn't that uniform a little large for you? All right, now, no ribs. Well, just what's the idea of you putting on that uniform and becoming a member of the Eagles baseball team? It's all in the line of duty, my sweet. I wanted to find out what goes on when they play a game, and the best way I could think of was to join the team. Are you going to be in the game? <laughs> Hardly. Oh, what a pity. I had trouble enough getting permission to sit on the bench. Well, why are they playing in this park today? What's the matter with the stadium we went to before? They haven't used Eagle Field since the murders. Now, will you excuse me, dear? I'm going down to the bench and sit with the players. Okay. Oh, Lamont. Yes? If there's a tailor down there, have him take in those trousers. Oh. Oh, Come on, I'll knock out a few to you. Okay, put some one of them in there. Uh, Pardon me, uh, didn't I meet you down at police headquarters? Yes, that's right. You're Pixie Parker, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Are you maybe becoming a member of this team, uh, sitting on the bench like this? <laughs> no, Pixie. With your manager's permission, I'm visiting here today. Oh, you're like a visitor, huh? Yes, that's right. I get it. Hey, Bogo! Yeah? Come here. I want you to meet Mr. Uh, uh, Cranston. Uh, Mr. Cranston. Uh, he's like a visitor here today. How do you do, Mr. Cranston? Hello, Bogo. Bogo is our bat boy. Oh, yes. I've seen him on the field. You're a good little ball player, too, Bogo. Thanks. Yeah, he would be an even better ball player if it wasn't on account of his hunchback. Cut it, Pixie. Charlie, you'd never know that me and Boko is pals the way he gets sore at me sometimes, would you? I'm sure you're pals. Hey, Pix. Yeah? Get out there and warm up. You're pitching today. No good. What do you mean, no good? I am not working today. I am not in the mood. Now listen, Pixie. I have spoken. Well, I'm still the manager of this team, and I say Let you get out... Let me talk to him, Mr. Stewart. What? He'll work today. I'll have him out there in a few minutes. Now listen, Boko. Shut Bogo. up. He'll pitch, Mr. Stewart. Uh, he'd better. Fine ball club where the manager has to get the bat boy to convince a player to pitch. Bogo, I don't care what you say. I you think... listen to me. Look at me. Now, who's the greatest pitcher in baseball? Who is? Answer me. Answer me. I am. You see all those people there in the stands? They're here for just one reason. To see the great Parker pitch. That's right. You're to not going to disappoint pitch. him, are you? You're going to give them their money's worth, aren't you? Yeah, their money's worth. Good. Come on, let's go out and warm up. Whatever you say, Boko. Whatever you say. Mr. Stewart. Yes? Does this Bogo always influence Parker like that? Yeah. He's the only one who can do anything with him. Bogo is like a little god to him. That's strange. There's a lot of strange things in baseball, Mr. Cranston. Would you excuse me a second, please? Sure, sure. Thanks. Margo. Oh, I know. They want you to play after all. No, now, be serious. I wish you'd do something for me right away. What? Go up to the front office and find out the home address of Pixie Parker. Why? What's up? He's going to receive a visit this evening from the shadow. Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker. What? Mr. Parker. I'd like to talk to you. Where are you? I don't see nobody. I'm right here in this room with you. No, don't look around for me. I'm invisible to your eyes. What is this, spooks or something? I'm not a spook, Pixie. I'm a flesh and blood human. But I control your mind so that you can't see me. Who are you? Men call me the Shadow. Well, but what do you want from me? I'm seeking information. Information about your little friend, Bogo. Bogo? What's the matter with Bogo? He ain't done nothing. You're wrong, Parker. Bogo has done plenty. Well, what do you mean? I mean that I have reason to believe that Bogo is responsible for the murders in the ballpark. Ah, uh, you're, you're crazy. Bogo wouldn't hurt nobody. That's where you're wrong, Parker. Now tell me, what is this influence that he exerts over you? Influence? Yes, this power to make you do just what he wants you to. Well, he, he ain't got no power over me. He, he just thinks I'm the greatest pitcher that ever was. And the only time he ever gets sore is when nobody agrees with that. I see. He's my pal. Why, why, just the other day, he said he'd kill any pitcher that people thought was better than me. He's... Kill anybody? No. Oh, no. 
No, he didn't mean nothing by that, though, honest. You're wrong, Parker. No, he wouldn't hurt nobody. He, he's just rooting for me, that's all. Why, why if anything was to happen to me, I, I think he'd die. We'll give him a chance to prove that tonight, Parker. What do you mean? You'll see, Parker. You'll see. <laughs> Commissioner Weston speaking. Commissioner, this is the shadow. What? You again? Yes, I'm sorry to bother you, but I believe that I have a solution to your baseball murders. What? You have? Or who did them? I can't say for sure yet. Oh, now, look, Shadow, I'm a busy man. Weston, I have... you must believe me. Now, here's what I want you to do. Get every player that was in the game the other night up to Eagle Field right away. Why? I want you to restage the game and the murder just as it occurred before. But I have... I been... happen to know about that electric plate that killed Moss. Well, uh, how did you find that out? Never mind. Now, here's an important detail. Don't allow Pixie Parker to talk to anyone until I arrive. Say, who's supposed to be the police commissioner around here anyway? You are, of course, Commissioner. See you at the ballpark. Well, a ball that... Murphy! Murphy! Uh, yes, sir. I uh, just got an idea. Yes, Commissioner. Call all the players that were in that game the other night. Get them up to the park. Yes, sir. I think I figured out a solution to the murders. Ah, good work, Chief. Oh, thank you, Murphy. Ah, wonder where that shadow is. Wonder what he expects to find out here. Good evening, Commissioner Weston. Stand right where you are. Sorry to be late for the ball game. All right, Shadow, what do you want? What's this, one of your gay little pranks? No, Commissioner. This is a very serious matter. No one knows I'm here but you. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, look. Here's what I want you to do. Now, look. Here's what I want you to do, men. Listen to the Commissioner there, We're pause. going to replay the events leading up to the crime exactly as they happened the other night. Everyone take his position in the field, please. Follow that now. You'll have a complete team out there, Commissioner Weston. That is, except for a pitcher. I will want someone to stand in for the late Mr. Marson, too. Uh, get Pixie Parker. Okay. Hey, Pixie! Yep, I'll be right with you. Well, good evening, Commissioner Weston. What? Why didn't you tell me you were going to have this party? Margo and I wouldn't want to miss this for the world. Here again, eh, Cranston? Good evening, Miss Lay. Not a very cordial reception, Commissioner. What are you doing, giving up your job in the police force and becoming a baseball player? Now, look here, you two. Now that you hear, you can stay, but keep quiet. This is a very serious job. All right, we won't say a word. Pixie Parker? Yes, sir. I'd like you to reenact Marson's role in the game the other night. Well, you mean I, I should be standing in for a dead guy? There's no danger, Pixie. Of course, if you're afraid... Who's wait afraid? a minute. Don't do it, Pixie. Why, Boco, do you want him to think maybe I'm scared? I don't care what they think. Let him use someone else. But I want Parker to do it, Boco. Well, he ain't doing it, see? Now, wait a minute, Shorty. I said he's doing it, and that goes. I uh, guess that settles it, huh, Boco? You want us to go out there now? Yes, Pixie, now. Okay. Where are you going, Bogo? Well, I, I'm going back to the clubhouse. I'm not going to watch my pal play a dead man. You'd better stay here. What for? Stay here, Bogo. Stick with him, Murphy. Yes, well, what is this? You guys can't kick me around. Mr. Stewart, did you uh, tell the man to put out the floodlights just as it did the other night? Yes, Commissioner. Get out there on the pitcher's mound, Pixie. Okay. I uh, want you to wind up just the way Marson did. Then we'll put the lights out. No. No, don't do it, Pixie. Shut up, you. Ready, Parker? All right. Pixie! Pixie, no, she'll be electrocuted. How did you know he'd be electrocuted, Bogo? Why, why, you fellas were talking about it. No one knew how Marson died except myself and you, Bogo. I don't know what made me say it. Honest, I don't. I know what made you say it. You said it because you murdered Ed Marson. Oh, that's a lie. Then why didn't you want Parker to get out in the pitcher's mound? And why did you want to leave here? Because you wanted to turn off the current so that Parker wouldn't be electrocuted like Marson? No, no. And why? Why? Perhaps I can tell you why, Commissioner. Because in Bogo's own mind... He is Parker. Why, you're crazy. No, all your life you've wanted to be a great ball player. But you couldn't be, Bogo. You yeah. couldn't be because of your handicap. Yeah. When Parker came along, at last you'd found someone to whom you could transfer that yeah. desire. Someone with a mind sufficiently childish to <laughs> obey your wishes. You began to imagine that you were Parker. You were pitching those great games. Isn't that right, Bogo? Uh, sure, sure, I am Parker. Then your ego took hold. You became jealous of anyone whose fame might outdo yours. Yours and Parker. And that jealousy made you murder Whitey Brooks, Andy Crossman, and Ed Marshall. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I killed all of them. Oh, no, that ain't true. I'm sure it's true, you simpleton. I was the one who made you great. I was you, Parker. Without me, you're not. He don't mean that. Weston, there's your confession. Well, Mont, you were wonderful. You sounded just like a real detective. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Commissioner. I didn't mean to take over your job. The, the excitement must have gotten me. That's all right. Uh, put the cuffs on him, Irving. Let go of me. Look out. He's got a gun. Don't move any of you. I'm getting out of this park, see? None of you can touch me. <laughs> I can fuck him without hitting one of the players. Wait, put that gun away, Commissioner. I'll have to shoot him. He's getting away. He's not getting away. Give me that baseball. Here. So I ain't no pitcher without him, huh? I'll show him something. Uh, hit him. Good Lord. That's the best strike I ever threw. Go out and pick him up, Mr. Commissioner. Compliments to the great Pixie Parker. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is on sale at your local newsstand. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs>